Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now it's been quite a while since I've done a full tour of my aquariums, all my aquariums, uh, specifically this room down here. Now I've gotten a lot of requests asking for an update and for me to kind of show some new things that I'm doing down here. So I thought I would make another video tour of all of my aquariums down here in this fish room. Now in total, I have over 30 systems, um, but down here in this room, we now have 25 aquariums. So I thought what I would do is kind of go around and film a little bit longer of a video today, kind of taking you through each tank, talking a little bit about what I've done with it, what's new, what I have planned, etc., And I kind of give you a little bit more behind the scenes of this fish room down here. So with that, I think what I'll do is we'll just kind of go around the room. Today we'll do it clockwise. I think last time we did it counterclockwise on that video, but this time we'll do it clockwise and we'll go this way and I'll have to kind of play around with the lights and everything because I've spooked some of the fish uh, by setting up my lights for this video. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. Real quick, what I thought I would do is uh, just talk briefly about this room before I start taking you through by uh, tank by tank. Um, so down here in this room, I don't have heaters in any of these aquariums. I do heat the room. Um, it is insulated. I do have the sound panels uh, to reduce the amount of uh, sound vibration and echo in here, which also helps insulate the room. And then the dehumidifier that I have in there actually keeps this room kind of at a perfect uh, 78 to 80 degrees or so. Um, and uh, other than that, everything is uh, pretty self-sufficient. Uh, you can see that I'm, I'm sponsored by uh, some of my supporters here, Extreme Aquatic Foods, Fritz Aquatics, and Aquarium Co-op. Okay, so starting off, we have the Oscar tank uh, and the Silver Dollar tank. Now, I apologize that all the Silver Dollars are kind of hanging out and hiding. Um, they're a little bit skittish, as you know, and uh, messing around with the lights down here for filming. And so they're all kind of hiding down there. But if you remember, I bought those last year and they were really tiny and they were kept down there in a little 20-gallon tank. Now they are quite large. They are probably... Um, easily four to five inches uh, per fish, so quite large. But anyway, this is a 125 gallon aquarium, uh, six feet long, and in here I have a pair of Oscars and the uh, the um, Silver Dollars, as well as some Cynodonis. So I'll try to get some B-roll later on, uh, just so that there's some better footage of these fish here, so that uh, we're not just staring at fish hiding. But uh, anyway, these uh, Oscars have tried to spawn a few times. You can kind of see that they've got a little uh, area there where they're um, kind of clearing out a little spawning area as well, again. But uh, no su successful spawns. Obviously, I've got other fish that would predate and eat the eggs. Um, but not trying to spawn them, but they're, they're just trying to do it anyway. So anyway, this is my Oscar tank. I actually got this tank for free. Um, I got this tank from a uh, client of mine um, that when I was back uh, doing aquarium service and uh, they had closed down their office. This was one of the aquariums that I had serviced uh, along with this Oscar. And uh, so they gave it to me. So I'm very happy to have this tank. Moving on, we've got uh, Tanganyika tank. This is my Brichardi aquarium here. Um, only Brichardi. And I only put, I want to say I put about four or five of them in here and they have spawned uh, quite a bit. Um, so there are multiple generations of Brichardi uh, down in this aquarium. This is a 37 gallon acrylic tank. Uh, another tank I got for free from a friend of mine that was um, moving and kind of getting rid of a bunch of tanks that he had had. And uh, so I, you know, gladly took this off of his hands. Um, and it's a great home for the Bashardi. The Bashardi uh, do very well in this aquarium. It's lots of rock work to hide. Um, and obviously, you know, the fact that they spawn quite a bit, um, they seem to be doing very well. So down below, underneath the Bashardi Aquarium, we have uh, one of my, I guess, overflow tanks. Uh, this is uh, some gold ocelotus that I had, um, uh, these were fry that I had gotten from a spawn in one of my other aquariums, which we'll see shortly. And uh, so I separated uh, some of them out, um, gave some of them actually to Dean, Dean's Fish Room. So he has, I think, eight of mine that I uh, sent with him up to the Seattle area. And uh, these were some of the other ones that I had kept from that spawn. And so they are now growing out uh, down here and starting their own colony. I do have quite a bit of shells down here just to make sure that there's lots of shells for each fish um, as they can be kind of aggressive with one another. 
and I also have some line of sight breaks. So I've got some rocks and things like that in here to uh, break up the line of sight so that if there is any aggression, they can um, kind of hide from one another. So next to that aquarium is another 20 gallon aquarium that is empty. There's actually nothing in here. Uh, there might be a couple of snails in there, but basically this was a tank that was salt water and uh, just decided to not do salt water. Um, gave the fish away to a friend of mine and took out all the living things, uh, hermit crabs, etc., and uh, gave them to my friend and basically just set this up as a, um, a tank to do something different in. I do have a couple of ideas on what I want to do, but I haven't found those fish yet and I'm not in a rush to stock it. So basically I just uh, set it up and um, you know put some bacteria in there and just kind of keep in the bacteria alive by throwing some fish food in there every once in a while. And uh, they seem, this tank is just doing fine. It's just ready for fish whenever I can find what I'm looking for. Up above is my 90 gallon, five foot long acrylic uh, peacock tank, Alonicara. Um, you can see that there are quite a few in here. Um, I've actually thinned this out quite a bit. Uh, there was about 12 more fish in here that I had given to a friend of mine. And um, this is kind of how I got my YouTube channel started uh, several years ago, was doing fish like this, uh, you know, African cichlids. And uh, kind of, a, these are near and dear to my heart. Um, obviously my logo for my channel is based on an African cichlid. So really do enjoy these fish. Um, and I've found that the overstocking method has been very good to me. It's been uh, successful in reducing the amount of aggression that I have in this tank. Even though they're always kind of bickering, I don't have any fish losses anymore. So very happy with uh, how this tank has turned out. If you notice that it's uh, dark in here, it's uh, because I am going around and turning off banks of lights um, for the ones that aren't in the shot. So I actually have all of these lights uh, set up um, on a smart plug so I can control them from my phone. So that's what I've been doing is uh, just turning the lights on and off as I go around the room so that there's less of a glare. Uh, anyway, this is the next aquarium. This is my 75 gallon uh, Solosi aquarium. Um, you, you can call them Pseudotrophia Solosi if that's what you're familiar with um, or Chindongo Solosi. In fact, I believe that the Correct name now is Chindongo, but um, originally they were called Pseudotrophia solosi. Um, what's great about these fish is that there's dimorphism between the males and females. That's very easy to tell. The way that you tell is that the males are blue and the females are yellow. So when they're babies, they all come out yellow. And as they grow and mature, uh, the males uh, become blue and the females will stay yellow. And sometimes you'll have some subdominant males that will kind of be in between where they're kind of blue and a little bit of yellow and um, just trying to blend in uh, with the females to uh, not get picked on by the males. But anyway, this is a 75 gallon acrylic tank. It's four feet long, a little bit taller than a normal 75. And this one was also free. I got this from a friend of mine. That same friend that was moving gave me this aquarium as well. So I really do love this tank. This is probably one of my favorite cichlid tanks that I have. I do want to pause here real briefly and ask all of you for a big favor. If you wouldn't mind, please just take a couple of seconds to like this video and to also subscribe to this channel. All right, now let's get back to the video. So down below underneath that 75 gallon acrylic tank, I have a 40 breeder. And in this 40 breeder, besides a bunch of snails and a bunch of duckweed, which you can see on the surface there, uh, I've got some Congo Tetras in here. The Congo Tetras, um, these ones are quite large, uh, very beautiful fish. They are a little bit on the skittish side. So, you know, depending on the movement in the room and the shadows and the light, they can uh, do quite a bit of hiding. Um, but uh, in here, it's kind of a combination of live plants and a couple plastic plants just because of all the duckweed that I have. Um, you know, some plants won't grow in here. I do have a dwarf aquarium lily in here. But uh, in addition to the Congo Tetras, there is a long finned uh, bristlenose pleco an albino uh, male that uh, is quite large. In fact, I saw him feeding yesterday and he's got giant fins just flowing. Um, hopefully I'll be able to catch some B-roll of him. Otherwise, you'll just have to take my word for it and uh, believe that he's a beautiful long fin that Bristle knows in here. Moving along, we've got a couple of uh, my favorite fish here. We've got shell dwellers. Uh, these are Neolamprologus multifasciatus, which is a shell dweller from Lake Tanganyika. And next to them, we've got the gold ocelotus. This is actually um, 
the uh, the breeding group that I got all those fry from. Um, you can see there's a, a big male there that's um, sticking his head in the uh, shell there. But uh, anyway, the shell dwellers uh, are from Lake Tanganyika in East Africa, and they are very fun. They actually will use these empty snail shells um, that they find in the bottom of the lake in Lake, uh, lake Tanganyika, and they will use them to raise their fry, spawn, escape from predators, etc. Uh, you can see these multis here. Uh, they are, <laughs> there's a lot of them. Um, and this is actually my overflow uh, colony from one of my aquariums upstairs, which I'll do a different video on um, sometime, where you can check that link that I put up above uh, earlier and uh, see that aquarium. But uh, anyway, wonderful fish, a lot of fun. Um, I do love the golds. They're probably uh, one of the prettiest shell dwellers um, that I've seen and uh, just a lot of personality big personality they can be uh, a little bit on the vicious side with one another but uh, very enjoyable so moving on uh, down below this is a 40 gallon breeder tank uh, which is brackish water brackish water is a mixture of fresh water and salt water and i have a few which we're going to see here today um, in here i have my green spotted puffer this is probably one of my most uh i don't know one of my favorite fish. This guy is just so cool. He will eat from his, from my hand, and uh, this is pretty much his tank to rule. There are some other fish in here. I've got uh, a handful of um, night gobies, um, but the night gobies always live in these caves and behind this rock wall that I built, so I hardly ever see them unless I sit here quietly and put some bloodworms or something in the tank and kind of pretend like I'm not here in the dark and then that's the only way I can capture them. But um, this background is something that I made. I made a series of videos on this background on how to make it. Um, you can see that it's kind of a living wall with some um, some uh, succulents there and air, air plants. And then I've got uh, the mangrove growing out of this uh, brackish water. So very fun, enjoyable tank and uh, pretty easy to care for. Uh, brackish water is very easy. Um, if you are interested in it, I'll put a link above about how to uh, care for brackish tanks, um, but it's a lot easier than many people think. All right, moving along, here we've got a Bofrin tank that's just full of a bunch of guppies. Um, nothing uh, too exciting about this aquarium other than it's just got a bunch of beautiful guppies in it, and uh, I pulled out a bunch of plants, so I'm kind of uh, in the process of getting ready to replant this tank and do something different, um, but right now just... Uh, just a ton of uh, crazy guppies. Uh, next to them, this is probably my favorite aquarium, and I've made videos about this uh, many times. Um, this is my brackish uh, Indian mudskipper and bumblebee goby aquarium. And in here, I've got a waterfall, I've got a bunch of land, uh, a bunch of water, obviously, for the fish. And this is also brackish water, so again, a mixture of salt water and fresh water. I've got a handful of bumblebee gobies and Indian mudskippers. The Indian mudskippers uh, stay really small. They stay, you know, maybe about three, three and a half inches or so, and about the uh, diameter of a pencil or a pen, maybe. Um, so kind of a fun nano brackish uh, mudskipper. Uh, these will actually eat out of my hand also, so I can actually um, put my hand in there with some flake food or something, and they'll actually jump in my hand and eat that right out of my hand. So down below, uh, not a whole lot to share here, um, and the reason why is uh, these tanks were being used previously for mudskippers and some other projects, um, which I have moved. So they are just kind of empty tanks ready to do something. Um, these could be quarantine tanks if I get new fish, which I'll probably do, um, or they can be set up as something else. So kind of just holding right now, um, waiting for something. The only one that's different is this one right here, where I have one lone African mudskipper um, way in the back there on that styrofoam. And again, this is brackish water. And the reason why this guy is in there alone is that he's a little bit too small to be kept with the other African mudskippers, which are a bit larger and quite aggressive. So I'm giving this one his own space for now just to kind of grow out and get some size on him. So moving along, this is a fun tank that I built uh, where I made this uh, DIY kind of island thing in the back there with uh, expanding foam. And in here I've got a bunch of brackish uh, live bears. These are mollies that I have in here along with some hermit crabs. So the crabs kind of live up on the land 
and all of the mollies are down here in the water just uh, living their best life and spawning and eating and uh, obviously making a lot more of them. Uh, down below, this is something that's new that you guys haven't seen before. So before this was just a black stand and what I did is I cut out uh, kind of the, a, an opening in the stand that I made. It's a stand that I built. I cut out an opening and added a shelf and added another 20 gallon aquarium that I had in storage. Um, right now, this is a grow out tank for my African mudskippers um, that I eventually I'm going to be rehoming. So if you're actually in the San Francisco Bay Area and are looking for some African mudskippers, you can send me a message on Instagram or something. Uh, there's a link down below for my Instagram. You can send me a DM and uh, you can inquire about these if you're looking for them as I'm uh, I bought these for a project uh, for the San Francisco Zoo, actually, and uh, that project uh, got canceled uh, due to COVID. And so I am um, looking to rehome these. So uh, hit me up for those. But uh, anyway, just a fun, uh, fun fish. We'll see more of these here shortly. Um, again, this is a brackish water fish. The African mudskippers get much larger. They'll get to be six or seven inches long and about the diameter of a hot dog. So much, much larger. And then lastly, back here, we have an aquarium that some of you may recognize from upstairs. This is my planted aquarium that has a couple of discus in there. I've got a bunch of stir Corridora, uh, some tetras, etc. cetera. Um, and I actually moved this from upstairs downstairs to this fish room. The reason why is my wife didn't want it in the house anymore. We've got too many tanks upstairs and she wanted to uh, have some space back in the living room. So I made a little space here in the corner of the fish room and uh, moved it down here. Now. The only sad part about me moving this tank down here is I actually lost some fish when I moved it. Um, we drained the water down to maybe about two to three inches of water, um, which was okay. It was quite heavy. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, he and I, you know, carried it down here. Um, <laughs> he wasn't happy that there was water in it. And in hindsight, I should have drained it all the way down and caught all the fish, but I just wasn't really into doing that. And uh, unfortunately, what happened is, is as we were carrying it down, a lot of the water was kind of sloshing around and mixing up the substrate and it got really dirty and mucky. And I think some of the fish just couldn't handle that, uh, that water that was, um, you know, kind of churned up from the substrate and, and not the best quality. So I did lose some fish, unfortunately, um, but since then it's kind of rebounded and um, hopefully I will be uh, adding some fish here in the future. This tank here is a 29 gallon aquarium that I set up as a Tanganyikan rock dwelling uh, aquarium. I've got a bunch of Julietochromis in here. These are the uh, Julietochromis transcriptus Tanzania. And I have some red fin calvus as well in here. Um, and everyone seems to be pretty harmonious. The uh, Julies did a bunch of spawning and made extras. Uh, I'm sure that's not happening as much now with the calvus in there. They probably would predate on any uh, small fry in there, but um, very enjoyable tank. I like that uh, I kind of have this rock scape um, with some java fern and, and uh, anubias and things like that kind of growing on the rock, kind of algae, kind of a nice natural looking aquarium. Really do enjoy this tank and the way that it looks. It's pretty low maintenance as well. Down below, these are my most rare fish that I have. Uh, these are my um, top hat blennies. Uh, you might see these every once in a while um, available. Um, if they're sold as a freshwater fish, uh, that's really not ideal. These are also a brackish water fish. So um, these are actually from, I believe, the coast of Asia, like off the coast of Japan, etc. And I've got a couple of them in here. This guy's a little bit more out and about. The other one likes to hide in the um, inside the rock or inside that uh, barnacle shell there. But uh, these are brackish water blennies. Um, so they kind of have an interesting shape, uh, almost goby-like, almost eel-like. Um, and these are also very fun, personable. Um, even though one of them's pretty shy when I have food, they will swim out and uh, try to get some. You can see that there's one poking his head out right there. You can see him just poke his head out. Maybe he thinks that I've got uh, some food. He or she thinks I've got food, which I don't right now. But uh, very fun fish. I really do enjoy these guys. 
All right, here we are with yet another Brackish Aquarium. You can kind of see a theme here. Lots of Brackish tanks for me. Um, this is a tank that's pretty popular. Uh, these are my African Mudskippers and my Figure 8 Puffer. Um, so you can see the Puffer there kind of occupies the water area of this uh, aquarium, or Paludarium actually. And then there are a bunch of Mudskippers in here. So the African Mudskippers, as I shared, get much, much larger and uh, they spend most of their time on the land. So even though they are a true fish that are part of the Gobi family, they'll actually spend more of their time up on the surface, uh, just kind of not necessarily basking, but just kind of hanging around and hanging out and lounging um, on the surface uh, there. So um, anyway, this is a 75 gallon tank, uh, four feet long front to back. Uh, I've made videos about this and how I built it, which you can uh, check out. Uh, I'll either put a link above or below, um, but you can see that uh, there's a big bank and um, it actually works out quite well because on this side there's concrete and foam that's kind of holding everything together and then there's a bunch of sand in there. So underneath the uh, brackish tank there, <laughs> this tank looks terrible right now. So I'm just going to put some b-roll over this aquarium and show you what it looks like when the fish haven't uh, been spooked and have you know dug up all the substrate. But um, in here, these are my... Um, I've got a bunch of albino corridors in here, and I have some topaz cichlids, which are a beautiful uh, fish, which I've made about before, uh, a new world cichlid, and uh, really do enjoy this aquarium very, very much. So um, I'll just put some B-roll just so you can see what these guys look like. Um, they kind of are on the shy side, although again, anytime they know that I'm feeding, they will basically come and wait right in the front of the tank and uh, wait for me to drop some food in there and kind of go after it. They can be quite aggressive with one another as well. They've kind of marked off their own little territories and there are four of them in this tank. All right, so moving along, we've got a 75 gallon in Buna Aquarium. Um, and uh, they are, these guys have been around a long time. Um, anytime anyone's come to my fish room and visited, they always marvel at how large these fish are. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on camera right now, but some of these guys are giant. Um, I do have some uh, a hypothesis, uh, which I'm going to make a video about shortly, uh, talking about uh, fish and the size and how to get, make them, um, you know, grow like this. Um, but these, some of these are giants. I, in fact, well, the one just got spooked, bear, spooked there, but it's probably seven inches long and, and very, very broad and thick. But um, anyway, just fun fish. I do enjoy this aquarium. Um, there was a time when I was kind of considering getting rid of these fish and, and doing something different with this tank, but uh, a lot of you uh, talked me out of it, so I want to thank you for that. But anyway, love these guys. And then lastly, down below, underneath the Mbuna tank, we have another 40-gallon breeder tank. And in here, I have my pair of five-star generals. Um, the five-star generals are a West African cichlid, um, so they are from West Africa, and uh, they are part of the jewel cichlid family. Um, and really beautiful, brilliant colors. Um, the male kind of has like bluish purple uh, reds in his, um, in his finnage and in kind of gold scales. Uh, the female is similar, just not as brightly colored. Um, these are a spawning pair. I've actually gotten many, many fry from them. Um, I, I could, couldn't tell you how many uh, they've spawned. It's quite a bit, probably, you know, probably gotten a hundred or so fish from them. Um, over the spawns that they've done for me. They haven't spawned in quite a while, so I'm not sure if maybe the female's getting old or, you know, the conditions aren't aren't ideal for them anymore. Um, uh, you know, time of year, temperature, etc. cetera. But uh, been, I've had these fish for a while, very much enjoy them. And uh, they just don't do well with other fish. They're very territorial and can be quite aggressive. But again, a beautiful, enjoyable fish. So hopefully you enjoyed the tour of all of my aquariums, seeing what I've done, what's new, what hasn't changed, but I thought I would kind of give an update and show all of you what's going on down here. So anyway, please comment down below in the comment section what your thoughts are on this room, what you like, what you don't like, what's your favorite tank, what's your least favorite tank, all that good stuff. I love to read your comments, so uh, please uh, do so down below. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.